Welcome to episode four of this Let's Play series. I think it's episode four. Uh, this is where we're going to go into orbit, circularize our orbit around uh, Kerbin, and then do a uh, orbital transfer across to the Mun and get into a circular orbit around the Mun. In the next episode, we're going to land on the Mun and then come back home. And so that will be the next two episodes that, we, that we're going to be sort of covering. Now, we've got this ship that we designed. It's very, very stable, um, but I have, just for the sake of doing it now, I, a point of disclosure, I actually have had a massive problem when I was recording this episode already. So this is why the ship looks a little bit different, not with the design of the ship, but with the game. With it, um, Essentially, there's a few bugs in the game, which are very, very frustrating. One of them is that sometimes the stages won't separate at all, and they just it ends up dragging around the, the bits and pieces that should have been lost, and it just doesn't do it. And so I'm going to... I fixed it once by doing it a certain way. I'll see if I can fix it again the same way. The way of doing that is just to disconnect it. But also, I did actually put some struts on uh, when I was recording the last one, just to sort of show that you can, if you've got instability problems, you can actually just use, if you go across to structures and trusses, just use struts to start to, to secure things. We don't need it on this design. And another thing we didn't need as well was the, uh, was the fins. But um, you can certainly go to aerodynamics and then just go and place stabilizing fins on the actual craft itself, which is what we've got through here. So that's what that was what was designed on the actual ship itself. Uh, now, the problem that we had when I was recording, which is why I'm doing this re-recording, is uh, is this didn't separate properly. The the ring went, but then the rest of the of the of the ship then stayed connected to the to the actual rocket that was underneath here. So I'm going to go and grab that whole area, including the separator. I'm going to drag it away. So it's no longer part of the actual ship itself. And then I'm going to drag it back again. And that did fix it once before. But this is an incredibly annoying bug because uh, we don't know exactly when things are going to sort of work like this. One thing I might do, just in case it's the proximity, I might go and just bump this one up ever so slightly. I'm just going to press Shift and just push it up a couple of, couple of clicks. Um, then we'll just go back to the selection tool just to get a little bit more separation between the um, the tanks and things like that. It's, I don't know if that will fix it. I'm fingers crossed, uh, that, but that's um, what we need. Now the staging, we've got the parachute, the separator to get back home. We've got the, um, the lander and then that one as well, the fairing at the top, the, um, this one through here, which is where we had the problems uh, with that separator through there. Then we've got these um, these uh, um, radial separators than the actual rocket itself. Okay, the other thing that I had a little bit of problem with was um, I don't need to, I'm, I'm going a bit too high with the boosters, and so I'm going to actually just start with a uh, slightly less uh, thrust in the actual engine. That will give me a bit more grunt to try to get into orbit. Okay, so let's just uh, save that design. Back into here again, so we'll save. Here we go, and launch. Now what we'll do here is we'll actually just run the time forward until the next morning. Oops, where are we? Just look for the glow on the horizon. <coughs> it's just past that Milky Way look. There it is. There we go. So we just got the sunrise. Um, just come back a little bit from the actual craft itself. And we'll start our countdown. I'm just going to reduce the um, the thrust down to around about 70%. Which I think will be about right for this one. Uh, these don't push away, and so I just need to drop them straight down. I could use the little separatrons to actually push them away from the craft when they do separate, but uh, I won't worry about that. Frame rate's looking pretty bad. <laughs> it's, a, it's such a beast, this game. It, it just chews up so many resources. At least we're off the ground. Nice stability going back up. And I need to go straight up with this. Otherwise, these will actually come off on an angle and actually hit the, um, hit the craft and cause all sorts of issues. <clears throat> We won't know if this is a problem until we're basically getting ready to go into orbit. So we're a little way off. 
<clears throat> with what we're doing. So we're just heading straight up. It's really stable, this craft. What I'll try to do, um, I'll try to save these crafts for you and I'll put them on my coffee.com page if I can do it. Uh, I don't know if that will be at launch, but at some point I'll try to remember to do that. So um, when I do it, I'll put a link in the description. So just check if there's a, a, a ko-fi slash daz tactic link to the rockets that we actually have through here. So we're getting towards the end of this. Then maximize when we um, I've got one finger on the space bar ready to uh, ready to drop all of these to drop the weight and uh, one also on the Z key to then get maximum thrust out of this engine here. <clears throat> but this is going to work out well. This is going to around about 6k was where I wanted to actually have these tanks drop off so we can start to sort of lay it over. And it's a big frame drop when we do these sorts of um, disc, like these deconnections. De there we go, one, two, th about three seconds of frame drop, and we're now just go maximize. We're going to start to now lay this thing over to uh, push it into orbit. Now, one thing I wanted to do was actually push this one off away from, uh, from where we're actually going to go. So I'm going to move it away from that line a little bit. And um, the reason I'm doing that is so I can actually correct the problem when we get into orbit, because this quite often happens where you don't end up right on the equator, uh, where you end up on an inclined angle to the equator, and we have to fix that. But I'll just go a little bit off, because it does take uh, delta V to actually go and fix it. <clears throat> but I'll just go through how you fix all those sorts of little problems. I won't go too far off, because it does, as I say, chew up delta V, and we don't have a hell of a lot to, of that to... Um, to look after. We just want to sort of slowly still keep a fairly high angle. Really until we get right up into this top atmosphere up through here, around about say 50k and then I can start to sort of then push it right over. <clears throat> so I'm looking at my Apo apps, I'm looking at my how far away the Apo apps actually is and how high up I am. I'm only 16 kilometers up which is not very high. Hell of a lot of delta V on this rocket, which is great. This is really quite a nice uh, booster type rocket for the sort of smaller craft. Actually, it's uh, really quite nice. So we're still in the atmosphere. We're only 20 k's up now, but it's getting thinner and thinner. Let's just push it over so we now sort of follow the um, the direction of the ship. Just going to punch out of this soup, which we're getting closer and closer now. It's now 30 kilometers up. I love how the angle of the actual rocket changes as the air pressure drops. You know, it's, it's looks very real, doesn't it? If you've sort of been watching any of the um, of these the Starlink type uh, launches and things, that's exactly what they do. 35k now for the Apo apps. Once we get up to around about 80, I'm going to then start to try to um, to fix things up a little bit. Still 49 seconds away. It's wanting to push over. That's now pointing direct, directly where the where the ship actually is is going. 42. We're now sort of just hitting the upper atmosphere. Beautiful clear day with the space center down below us. <laughs> the uh, flying directly into the sun. Fifty kilometers now. But we're only at still at 30, oh, about 40 kilometres. We need to still be heading up. We don't want to be travelling sideways too much. We may be going a little bit too sideways here. So keep that one going. 
So we're over a minute away now from the where the Apo Apps is, and this will then push out as we get higher and higher. Still a fair bit of, of uh, fuel left in this tank. Now the other end, the next engine is the one that uh, that we know that we're going to be able to. Um, well, we should be able to get to the MUN and also get into the orbit with just this next engine. 71, 72. Let's now move it over a little bit. And let's throttle down. Just try to maintain around about a minute. I'm just going to try to milk as much of this as I can. We're at 80 now. Let's just push this one over. It's going to keep on going up because we're actually still accelerating. We've still got the. Um, we've still got the. If we point this one down, it will then start to sort of. Uh, it'll start to change things at the 82. And I don't want this to be too far ahead. It's it's less efficient for me to be too far ahead at this point in time. So I'm just going to try to sort of tweak it around this, this this level so I'm actually pointing down into the ground we're still actually moving up because that's showing me that we're actually sort of moving in this sort of direction but we are just get a little bit of thrust and we're actually coming backwards slightly which is fine but you can see we're still actually we're still going up and up and up so I'm just trying to sort of now just correct that that problem that was there so we're almost out of uh, out of fuel now I can do all the maneuver nodes and things like that, but I'll just do this one. I'll just eyeball this one in to the to what we require. So I'm looking at the Apo apps and this one here. But by all means, if you wanted to go into the map mode and do your circularization at this stage, just go and do it. That's fine. Again, maybe look at 100 as your as your goal rather than 80. I'm, I'm doing 80 because it always ends up being more than what you want, and so I'm ultimately going to end up at around about 100. I would think. So we're coming backwards slightly. I'm just, I'm really, all I'm trying to do is just push this. We're now at 70, so we're now in space. So there's no actual drag anymore. Um, I don't want to let go of, I don't want to let the fairing go until we're ready, but we are now in space. And we're now at 84. So I'll just keep this one sort of still pointing down towards the ground a little bit, but the throttle is very, very low. We've still got 400 odd. Um, Delta V actually, so that's a fair bit of Delta V and we're slowly pulling the, the periapsis back up. But see how this is still rising. <laughs> we're now a minute 16 away. I'm just trying to manage the time. The reason for that, if I go back into the map mode, if the Apo apps goes too far away, I've then got a point even further down. And so I, don't, I just want it to be just a little bit ahead of where I am all the time. When I'm doing this sort of, when I'm up doing these sorts of maneuvers, it's coming back down to around about a, a minute now. And you can see I'm still pointing down towards the ground, and um, and it's still it's maintaining around about that minute, which is fine. Forty seconds to a minute and a half is is usually pretty good for this doing these sorts of things, and just slowly, slowly, this is being pushed out to then create the orbit. So I'm going to manage the orbit by just managing the Apo apps, but still pushing across in that direction. We're a minute there now. If I need to uh, accelerate things a little bit, I can. Um, but we'll just tweak this as it goes through. This is uh, this has been quite nice. I might just go back to the uh, to the actual this mode here because we're nearly out of uh, out of fuel now. So we're a minute away. If we go over the Apo apps at this point, it also won't really matter that much. We can sort of just push it up a little bit into the sky. And try to sort of get the Apo apps in front of us again. Here we go. We've now run out. So we're, so this one is now done. I'm just going to press X, turn off the uh, off the engine, and now this is where things have been failing for me. I might just press F5, which does a quick save of the game, and uh, that way, just in case. And it's screwed up again. Can you believe it? Oh God, this is annoying. I'm just going to pause and see if I can fix this. All right, got success. I did it through the parts manager rather than through the staging. Okay, so we're now actually still, uh, we're now a little bit behind. So let's just go and um, get this engine firing. And we need to just keep on sort of moving it. So we're 30 seconds away from the Apo apps now. I'll just um, push this one down a little bit. 
So we're now using this, this particular rocket engine. We've got heaps of Delta V on this thing. This is going to be very, very good for us. Now, are we coming backwards still? We are. Let's just push up the, uh, the amounts a little bit. We're only 24 seconds away from the Apo apps. This is now coming back up. And now we're just going to keep on pushing it. See how it's now accelerating away? Let's just keep that 40 seconds. <laughs> and this is now still rising. So it's still rising up. But this is now pushing up quite nicely. So I'm trying to maintain this. I'm trying to use the thrust to just keep it just a little bit ahead of where I am. But the closer I get to the Apo apps, the oh, sorry, the periapsis, the um, the closer it's going to be to circularizing. So if I go back to the map mode again, I can sort of see I can do this in either in either mode. But that's this is very very close now to um, you can, the Apo apps is still it's just blown out a little bit. But the periapsis is also now 63, so it's actually not too bad. It is inside the uh, inside the atmosphere, but only just. So we're back down to around about 50 seconds. Let's just go back into this one again. So I'm just doing it by these numbers here. So just a tiny little little thrust on this one. I'm just going to keep it. I'm going to keep it pointing to the peri to the uh, prograde now. So it's just in the direction of the ship. So I'm just going to now push it this way, and just keep it tweaked a little bit. Just wait for it to come down to around about say 25 seconds. So I'm just going to micromanage and just get a, a really nice circular orbit by, by, um, by getting it close to the, the Apo apps and just keeping, keeping this one going. A little bit, just pushing it out. See, it's just flipped into, we're now into a, a, technically into an orbit, so we've now got a, a change of what's actually happening. Still at 88, we're still 30 odd seconds away, but now it's 73. So we're now safe uh, at this point in time, we're out, outside of the 70. So uh, we're not going to have any sort of issues with slowing down as we actually do hit the atmosphere. We are perfectly uh, now in, in orbit, but it's just not very circular. There we go, 20 seconds. Let's just go and push this one out a little bit. It's maintaining the 21, 22. And we're getting close to the 80. And just see how it accelerates away as we get closer and closer to this, this number. I'll let it go a little bit further in. <laughs> We might as well just get really, um, not exact, but we'll get very, very close. Now, I could actually still point downwards slightly as I'm further away from the Apo apps and just sort of uh, circularize that way. But I'll just do one little more thrust with this thing and, uh, and then we'll be done. And so this is going to be the engine that will take us to the MUN. Um, but we've still got a bit of work to do now. I'll just do one little more tweak and just try to get it up to around about, say, 85. Let it go, and there we go. That is about as circular as we're going to get. So we're 88 uh, uh, kilometers from the apoapsis and the periapsis, so very, very circular orbit around. Uh, now, you don't have to be circular like this. It, it doesn't matter critically. I just was doing that for the fun of it because I do enjoy getting into these sort of orbits. And the more you practice getting into circular orbits, the better off it will be for you, the more enjoyment you'll actually have from the game as well, because you will then be able to do things like create space stations where they're very, very stable. And so it, it does make a big difference to actually be able to get exactly what you want from an orbit. So you can see we're now 13 minutes away from the Apo apps and 29 minutes away from the periapsis. Uh, if we go and have another look, there's a few things now that we're gonna do from the map mode. So we'll just press M. And uh, in the map mode through here, there's the MUN right there. Now, if you need to find it, just scroll around until you actually sort of see it. There'll be a disc around where we are in Kerbin. Uh, but they'll have the MUN. There's also Minmus, which is also on a slightly inclined orbit. So the, the orbit is slightly off the equ equatorial orbit, whereas the MUN is actually right on the equatorial orbit. So I'm going to now click on the MUN or just right click and then just make this the target. So we do that. We now have a few different little things. Now, remember when I set off, I didn't quite go on that line there, the uh, the 90 degree line. I was slightly off with that. Um, and what that actually does is, actually there's a few other things we need to do while we're actually here. Now that we're in orbit, sorry, I'll come back to this. Uh, we'll talk about this in just a minute. Uh, we'll just go back and press M. The next thing we need to do with this is to let the fairing go. 
and so the fairing is going to uh, drop now again there'll be a bug here it should just drop straight down it's supposed to blast away anyway let's see what happens oh it went off the front this time okay that's fine <laughs> off you go it is supposed to supposed to sort of separate itself back out again and do other things but that's what it did that's fine that's not a problem and so it's now just sort of wandering off there the ship itself is now sort of all set up ready to go and we no longer have any atmospheric drag so we can start to do other things with our ship uh, including s setting out the the electrical currents we currently don't have any electrical drain but that you will find that it, it may just be that the game doesn't have it in there with this version that I've got but it's a good habit to get into so just go and click over on your solar panels that should have just done what it needed to do um, if I right click there's the uh, OL4 I'll just extend the panels manually there we go bang done and so they're going to automatically then sh uh, move to actually collect the sun sunlight if, if they can sometimes you may have to rotate your ship to sort of get the best of the sunlight where is the sunlight it's right above us yeah so these are not going to be all that effective but uh, that'll be okay They're, like i just want to have them extended for the flight um yeah that should have actually worked um yeah lack of solar exposure was one of the little warnings we just had and that's because we're not facing like it's the the solar you can see there the shadow is coming straight down on top of it so I guess this is a problem that we can actually then sort of show. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off my SAS and I'm going to then turn it back on again so it's just locked into here. And I'm just going to turn the ship, if I needed to, I could actually just rotate the ship using the WASD keys. So if I press the W key, for example, the ship will then, oops, hang on, press the A key, it will then start to pick up the, uh, the, the, the solar as we sort of then have it pointing directly up. So if I point it directly up, we're now pointing directly at uh, at, this, at, this, at the curb in itself, or Kerbal, whatever the sun is, the sun system is. So we're actually now facing directly up, or sort of directly away from, actually, that's just directly away from Kerb and not directly up at the, at the sun, but it just so happens to be the same thing, essentially. So our solar panels are now picking up the sun rays. Um, that's all fine. Uh, let's go back to uh, the orbital mechanics and what we were just had set up before. So press M. What we have done is we've now set the, the MUN is now our target. And this is going to be our target for pretty much the whole time until we need to come home. And um, what you'll see through here is we have some dotted lines that go out to the orbit of the MUN. And it's telling me that these are negative 7 degrees. Now the problem with this is that if it's 7 degrees isn't going to matter that much. But ideally, you want these to be zero. And this is because I went off this nav ball a little bit with the craft. And so I sort of, uh, so I, I had moved the craft away from the equatorial uh, line. Now, if it's sort of like a couple of degrees, I wouldn't worry too much about it. But seven degrees, you know, like we can, we can certainly fix this. And so there's a few things we can do. We can just say, go and set maneuver nodes on these points. And so we'll just go and cross put a, a, a um, I'll just get rid of the, that one through there and then this one here we just want to go and tweak these and so that they actually end up where the orbits when we sort of see the orbits that we actually have um, our orbit if we just get down and sort of line it up see how it's not really lined up with the um, we're seven degrees off so we need to tweak that so that it comes back up a little bit oh god this is painful And it's also going to affect the the app the apo apps and periapsis and stuff like this as well just come in a little bit so we can sort of see it there if we can but i've got a little bit of work to do oh god this is such a painful thing see how it's now that's now dragging it back in so we're starting to get closer and closer it's now going to be negative 2.6 There we go. It's now sort of uh, 0.04. Uh, and when we have a look at this one, the Apo apps is uh, still still not bad, actually. But that's essentially what we need to do. Now, this is going to cost me 265 Delta V to fix this up. This is my little problem that I had there before. Now, what I can do is I can try to do other little things so that we don't push the um, everything around. If I just pull this one back, does that one come back at all or does it extend it out? 
That actually makes it worse. Just go back further the other way. That makes it worse as well, actually. So no, it is where it was was about right. So we'll just keep it there. I don't think this is going to help me much either. Yep, no, that does make it worse. So I'm just using the various um, uh, various areas to sort of then fix this one up. So uh, this is going to be basically in four minutes. We're going to then do a, a small burn of 265. Uh, I'll just I'll just manually sort of control this myself actually. So let's just go across to the actual burn. So we're just going to maneuver in, and we need to point at the actual maneuver, at the uh, at, at what we're sort of aiming for, which is going to be translating across this side. Got 20 seconds. And I'm just going to go and start burning now. Actually, I'm a little way off. It's not going to matter that much. And so this is now just going to start pushing everything back up. See the apoapse and periapsis is changing a little bit as well with what we're doing. Again, I don't want to come inside too much. I can always just fix this one up afterwards. This is now almost through. I don't I won't worry about fixing this one up, but that's we're now correcting the orbital plane. Okay, that's now pretty good. That's actually not too bad. We can just go back into this thing and delete it. And so we're now negative uh, we're 0.3 away from the, the orbital plane which means that we're sort of running around the same our orbit is the same as what the Mun's orbit is now if we had set something up like for example Minmus as our target uh, you'll see there that it's already at a seven degree plane and if we get that one wrong we then have to just go back into where it, we happen to be right on where we, where we would have needed to change it anyway but uh, you get the idea that we like depending on what we're aiming for we we may have to fix that up and so that can be quite dramatic anyway the mun is our target so we'll set that as a target and so now what we need to do is actually find a way of actually hitting the mun uh, now i hope that you've had a look at the tutorials because they do explain it very very well as to what to do we need to try to uh it's going to as as we move around um we're going to be wanting to burn and push like an apoapse out to try to then capture the moon. Now, if I do it, if I line up the MUN in through here and throw another maneuver plan in through this side and then just start to push out, it will then push itself out towards where the MUN actually is. Uh, there we are, so we're getting closer and closer. And you can see there that we're now breaking through the, at the like essentially the, um, the orbital plane of the Mun, but the Mun is not going to be there. Uh, when we get to I1 over here, the Mun is over here. And when we get over to this one, it's going to be over here. So we're what we're miles off with what we're doing here. So all we need to do is just drag this around until we get a connection. And there we go. So at around this point, we start to now get, um, we start to intercept. And what this is showing us is it's showing us uh, over here we now have sort of it shows us around the local environment of the MUN where we're going to be coming in and out. We have an, an entry, so we have like a, um, uh, a an entry and an exit uh, with what we're actually doing. So we can sort of tweak these a little bit more just to sort of see what happens if we push further out or come back further in. Um, we can just keep on sort of pulling these around until we get sort of like a, a better arrangement. So that one's still missing. That one is actually sort of doing fairly well at this at this point. We actually crash into the MUN at that point. So we want to get close to where it's crashing. But let's just go this other side of it. So we end up with a periapsis in through there. Let's just drag this one backwards a little bit. Just so we're not wasting too much uh, of the uh, delta V. You can see the delta V, 847. Eight, uh, and we'll bring that one back across. There we are. We're getting... Um, other connections now happening. We're sort of seeing also multiple uh, multiple con uh, connections now with it as well, so which does get a little bit confusing. But that's our entry, that's our exit. Let's just drag this one around a little bit and just to see if we can get another... We don't get a collision anymore. But that's a... We, we are getting a... a um, we're getting an encounter at this point in time. So... Um, let's just go around a bit further. 
And as, we, as we're moving this, we're sort of seeing the, uh, what's happening around the actual MUN itself with, the actual, uh, with these uh, orbital maneuvers. I'm sort of happy enough with that one. I might just push it out a little bit more. So 8.43 is going to be our burn. Uh, this is going to be in 19 minutes time. We'll end up uh, doing this particular burn. I don't need to worry. We're actually seeing two different encounters. It's actually, we've got to, we actually hit the moon. We accelerate out from the moon because we get like a, an orbital, um, sort of a, gravi a, gravi a gravity boost because we're actually hitting this other side of the moon. That will, the gravity boost will then flick us around and actually flick our orbit out even further which is what we're seeing back out through this side. Then we come back in again with a bigger orbit. This is how you do gra uh, gravity, um, yeah, gra what are they called? Gravitational acceleration or whatever it is to, uh, to, to get the, the boost from the gravity. If we come back the other side, I've got a bit of time, so I might as well show you this. If we come back the other side and go in front of the MUN, we then end up with a, with a should end up with a smaller orbit ultimately, because we're actually sort of coming in front of it actually it's still pushing itself out I'll just look I'll just leave it back to where it sort of where it was as long as we get the encounter that's going to be the important thing so anyway we'll, we'll, uh, we'll launch from here so we'll just go back to M again and look at the craft where is it, it must be in the dark side yeah we're on the dark side now of the of the planet uh, let's see accelerator time and um, get ourselves around there so we're going to just point towards the manoeuvre node now yeah we our electricity we're not using any electricity at all if I had lights maybe it would I just don't know if this version of the game actually does do this one so we're now pointing in the direction we're going to be burning ultimately let's accelerate time and get ourselves around to this, that particular location Okay, so we're now pointing in the direction of the maneuver node. We've got 44 seconds, and then we're just going to do a full on burn. Now, it looks good looking at it in this screen, but you get more information if you then look at the other screen. So we'll start the burn here and then sort of move our way through. I'll just wait for these seconds to sort of uh, wind their way down. Twenty-three seconds. Here we go. I don't like. I can sort of accelerate time a little bit faster, which I'll do just for this, just for you guys. <laughs> Let's go back to normal time. And uh, we're going to get green lights in through here. There we go. We've got green lights. So let's go and press Z. Full blast. Now we've got uh, a lot of Delta V in this stage, 1,700. And it's now just going to go back through here. Now I'm going to press the M key and we'll start to see what's going to happen as we start to accelerate towards it. Now this is showing us where the, where the encounter is going to be. And we're going to start to see our APO apps is now going to start to increase out. We're halfway through the burn. You can see we've hardly actually left this, but this is going to accelerate really quickly. In fact, this is now, it's giving us the indication as to what's going to happen back over here. Okay, we're going to now press X. We're getting an encounter there. Let's just sort of, just slowly, slowly bring stuff in. We already have the encounter that we wanted. Let's stop it there. We, we, won't, we don't need to do any more. We actually do have the encounter. So we'll now just go back in and um, remove that. And so we now actually have an encounter with the MUN um, at, the, at this point over through here. And then we leave it on the other side. So um, so we, we enter. We then sort of get close to the, the periapsis is going to be sort of with the MUN is going to be in through there. And then we sort of leave there. So what we have to do is we have to then tweak when we get to this point over here, uh, I'll just go back to the other, other side over this side. So we don't sort of see too much of what's going on there, but we're now moving our way out towards the MUN. We're accelerating quite quickly. And um, yeah, we're going to be uh, essentially sort of now, we're, we're, we're thousands of kilometers now out uh, to where the MUN actually is. So uh, let's accelerate time. The easiest way to do that is just to press M, come back across. It does, these things, 
are interesting, uh, just with what they're sort of showing with different sorts of other encounters and things. We don't need to worry too much about that. Uh, let's just go across. We'll get inside this mode and we'll just go and time warp to that point. And if we just go back to M, we're now just going to be accelerating away. So we now, I wish it would sort of slow down with the frame rate, but we're now just inside the uh, the encounter with the Mun. Now, I don't know if we're actually there just yet. If we press, press M. Yeah, we're now inside the, the encounter with the celestial body. All right, look, what I'm going to be doing is I'm just going to have to patch in some information because... Uh, I screwed up again. It's not so much me. It's the game's a bit buggy, and there's certain things that we're at this point in time. And this again is an early access to the early access version. There are just so many little things that go wrong, and so I had a lot of problems uh, coming in and, do, and circularizing my orbit. So I'm just going to go back in now and just sort of fix this one up. If we have a quick look at the map uh, back and through here, we've just come inside this circle of influence. I love that they're actually now showing this. This is really really cool. It's the way it's sort of doing this one. And then if we keep on going through, that's the closest we get to the actual MUN. And then we shoot on out, and then we sort of uh, exiting the sphere of influence at this point through here, in which case we are then sort of then zooming back out again and, and sort of deeper into the into like the Kerbin sort of areas and things like this. In fact, that sort of then sort of takes us even further away back out now with this um, because we do a, a bit of a slingshot maneuver. So anyway, uh, we're just really all we focused on is so much this one in through this side. I'm going to pull the uh, the um, periapsis in from 150 kilometers down to probably around about. I'm going to aim for around about 20 or 30. I was originally talking about 10 but it the game thinks i've already landed when i do that so i don't want i want to keep it of the fair safety margin so i'll make it 20. now to do this one all i need to do is just slow down and then the periapsis will then start to sort of come back in so i'm going to go and point the craft in the retrograde so going backwards have a bit of a look the craft will then flip and we can then sort of have a look at it from here as well just make sure I do actually have this, the moons the, or the mun set as the target. Yep, so I'll just set the target there. Um, as I say, if I just sort of come in a bit differently with this one. So we're now facing away from, from where we were, and I'm just going to now just give it a little bit of a burst of, um, of, the, uh, of the engines, and we should start to see the periapsis start to sort of come in a little bit. So I'm now burning very, very gently. I can actually grab this as well and have very, very fine control with the mouse if I wanted to. So it's just sort of slowly coming in. I'll get it, as I say, I'll just let it sort of come into around about, say, um, uh, 50, or sorry, about 30 kilometers. And I'll just press X when that's done. Yeah, at 10 kilometers, it didn't like it. <laughs> so just so that you're aware, if you are trying to sort of do this in the future, I don't know if it'll be fixed at any point. I'm guessing it will be. Around about 30 kilometers, it's coming in. That'll do us. So 30 kilometers there for the periapsis. I was finding that these numbers were flipping around all over the place, like what we're seeing here at the moment. Now, to circularize, we do want to circularize at that particular location. I can then just go and place a maneuver node and go and click on that one and then just drag this one back. So we're gonna slow it down at that point until we come, don't no longer have the, um, no longer leaving the sphere of influence. We're gonna then be sort of uh, coming straight back around and we then get an orbit. So we'll drag this one down. Don't know why it's flicking around like that. There are a lot of problems I gotta say with just the, um, the way that the game sort of does play with things. We'll just leave that one in. Now, some people I noticed were able to right click on these, or I just can't get these to show up at all. I've got no idea why they're doing this. But uh, that will just give us a bit of a feel for what we need 254 delta V with this particular burn. Let's, um, let's just go back so we can see what's going on, and we'll go and look at the MUN. Uh, we will actually now just make this one go and face in the direction of the node be back over through here and uh, we'll now just speed up time a little bit I just want to I want to actually watch this rather than just let this thing go to maximum I'll just come sort of uh, rattling in it just always looks so good in even in the old version of the game so we're still we're in the shadow of Kerbin 
which is why our craft is dark. So there's been like we're in sort of like total eclipse type mode. So we've got 54 minutes, 55 minutes, etc. Just watch as it comes back in, then we'll sort of slowly sort of bring the time back. Oh, there we go. We've just actually, the uh, Kerbin has just gone into a total eclipse. I mean, it, it sort of, it, so we're just getting the total eclipse now coming through. We're just starting to see the edge of the sun. So it's now just gone into an eclipse. <laughs> just all, everything's happening here. Everything's happening, uh, which is awesome. So 37 minutes, we'll just speed up time a little bit. 34, 33, there we go. We're out, out of the eclipse again now. minutes kind of looks good it does look so damn good so we're five minutes now um, as we're sort of coming back through um, just to get ready for this burn the burn we're, we're in the right direction for it when we do come into the closest mark and then what we'll do is we'll just start to um, I could almost just go uh, retrograde uh, rather than using this marker. It's going to be ultimately the same same sort of thing. This marker will ultimately end up being right on top of that when we do start to go. Um, but I'll, look, I'll I'll flick between the two of them as we sort of as we come in to do this one. I've still got four minutes. I'll just speed up time and just rattle forward to that next one. We're going to be unfortunately doing this on the dark side of the moon. Okay, so we're now coming back in and about 30 seconds or so for this particular burn. And I'm really just interested in what's going to be happening back over through here. It's weird the numbers that we end up getting through this side. I don't know why it's negative. It may mean that we still, yeah, we're still actually escaping. Oh no, we shouldn't be. I don't know why it's doing that. As I say, there's been a lot of little bugs with the game. I'll just manually do it now. back in still a minute 30 away from the periapsis so the closer we get to the periapsis the more control we're going to actually have on it so I'll now just make it go retrograde rather than use I won't bother worry about this one you can just go back to the um, to this area and whoops we don't want to destroy the vehicle we want to go and click on this one and then just ditch that one's periapsis has now moved out to here uh, away from where we were before so if we just go retrograde this will just allow us to slow things down um, basically in the direction that we're heading so we've still got the Apo apps out at 86 I'm just sort of slow this is stable now it wasn't stable when I was uh, playing with it at 10 kilometers away but 30 kilometers looks about right so this one should be good just do a little bit through here That'll do it. 3125 will actually do us there. So we're now in an orbit around the, like a fairly close orbit in around the Mun, and we're now going to get ready to um, to actually to um, land. And so I'm just going to have a quick look at the map. Yeah, when I was under 10 or when I was within 10 kilometres, it thought I'd already landed, so I no longer had all of this information. Uh, which was a bit of a problem. So we've got some areas, like some big flat areas that would be quite nice for us to um, to actually land on. Uh, we want to overshoot with our goal and then sort of uh, work out what we're going to do. So I'm, I'm going to try to aim for this great big C in through this side. I don't know what the game calls it, uh, but that's where we're going to be sort of aiming for. Now, if we go to the other side, if, uh, pretty much around where the periapsis is, uh, we're going to be able to then sort of have our... Like force the force the craft to then sort of cr come crashing in around over here somewhere I'm guessing so around where the periapsis is because it's going to be on the opposite side so if we just go back through and um, create a manoeuvre point and just drag this one back again there was I saw 
when the guys were doing, when they had the, the preview version of it, they were able to see what the information was. And I don't get to see it. It's very, very frustrating. Oh, it, does, it sort of comes up there. When you click on it, oh god, it's an, it's frustrating. It is very annoying. Um, I hope that they. Or, I mean, these things will be fixed. Not I hope they will be fixed. And um, at the moment, I can't really sort of control much. It is, as I say, I'm finding this actually annoying. The lack of control that I actually have, but I know that I've seen other people play the game. The ones that went to the special event actually were able to um, were able to have all these sorts of things work pretty well. Uh, now I don't want to go too far in. Look, I'm, I'm sort of crashing into the planet there, which is actually now it's probably going to be a little bit too too close. I'll just go a bit further forward. I can sort of do this one manually as I get closer to it. I don't know if I can put in extra um, extra commands. Oh, I can. That's good. That doesn't really work. <laughs> it doesn't really work at all. I'll just get rid of that one. All right. Well, we'll just do these these ones blindly. Um, this one's only a fifteen uh, meter burn. This is hardly anything, actually. Um, but we just want to get so that we're starting to come in close to the ground and so, or to, into the MUN. Um, so we'll just go and click on this one. Oops. Yeah, we will actually, we'll just have it so that we're facing in the opposite direction, which of course will be still retrograde ultimately by the time we get there. We'll just speed up time until our craft gets there. It's all on the dark side, so it won't really matter that much. And really, it doesn't matter when we start to do this one. I'm just going to go retrograde, and um, I will. Uh, I'll get rid of this marker. You've got to be very careful. You don't click on destroy. It destroys your craft. Now, if we if we're unsure, just do an F5. Do a lot of F5s. You're doing quick saves with those. And um, at this point, I'm just going to start to uh, pull this one in now. So we're, we're pointing in the retrograde. We'll just do a, a little bit of a, a drop and we'll start to see the, the periapsis now come back in. And we'll just drop it there, say 600 meters. In fact, it's probably a little bit light on actually. I might just um, go prograde and just push it back out again just a little bit. just so we overshoot. Now, landing is actually very, very simple. We're going to be using as much of our Delta V that we have stored up in this engine as much as we possibly can. Let's just get it uh, six kilometers up. That'll be okay. So we can sort of overshoot and we can start to then sort of maneuver as we start to come into this sort of area through here. So what I might do is I might, um, I might just go and tell it to race forward to this location and then we'll start to sort of set up our maneuver in through here so time warp to that point and I can still work on either this screen or on the next or on the other screen it looks much much better on the other screen so let's just do it on the other screen and then we'll sort of try to aim for in here somewhere so if we just go back to M uh, I'm now going to tell the craft to go retrograde and this is pretty much all we have to do for the landing is just keep it going retrograde. Now there's a few different things I can do. This is the orbital retrograde. If I click on these I've got sort of like other different sorts of settings. We'll talk about this as we sort of come into it. So retrograde is um, is going to be... God there's some good looking craters isn't there? Now what we want to do is we want to essentially stop uh, in the orbit and then go down but we we want to sort of come in fairly slowly to use as much of the fuel but we've got a heaps of fuel on this one so I might as well just do exactly that sort of try to get my orbital speed down to probably around about a hundred so let's go and set, set this one up we can go fairly strong our, our this is our the periapsis is now going to be going inside the planet we have a quick look on the M just have a bit of a look. Oh, we've already now we've sort of we've certainly come back. We're going to actually be landing in this rough area. 
I'll just press X. Now we've used up a fair bit of our delta, delta V. This here looks pretty good actually. So we're just going to keep on pressing with the retrograde showing. Now this is the orbital speed. When we get to surface speed, it's going to then be different again. Orbital speed, we want to get down to about zero. But if it when it changes to surface, that's not what we want. Now we're nearly out of delta V. So we're about 115 kilometers. Now you'll notice that this tracking ball will start to move up. Uh, I'm going to still just use this delta V and burn it off a little bit more. Just very, very gently. And the, the hop, because we're pointing retrograde, the craft will start, as we slow right down with the orbital speed, there we go, we've now just finished that one. Just gonna pop, the, um, pop that one off. And let that one go, that one's gonna uh, drop down. Let's get this, this craft now ready for landing. So I can either press G or press the gears back up through this side, but that's the G key there. And we're now looking at the surface speed. And so this is the this is the speed that we're going to be hitting the surface. Now, I still want to go orbital speed, so I'll just go orbit, and um, and I'll actually I'll keep it going this way. I think I'll no, I'll go surface. Uh, as we pick up speed, this is the speed that we're actually approaching the ground, and this is how far above the ground we are. If I click on that one there, that's the sea level, but the ground is actually what's below us, and that's the important thing. Now, if we it looks like we could be going into a little bit of rough terrain, but that won't matter too much, I don't think. So we've got a, we've got six kilometers to play with. We're going to be increasing our speed a lot. We've got a lot of delta V in this particular ship, so we've got a lot we can actually play with. But we've got to be careful now. I'm going to do another F5. Now, one of the great things with this, if I press Escape and go to Load Game, these quick saves are saved. So we keep, we keep, like we can have multiple of them, which is great. We never had that before. I'll just get that one out of the way. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> hmm, got a tickle in the throat. So we're four kilometers down, and yes, our surface speed is now becoming a bit too much. So we'll now just burn the, uh, burn the engines again. It's a good idea to get this so that you can see the shadows ultimately. So we want to bleed off the speed a little bit, but the more we do this, the more fuel we're going to be then using as we do this. Now, because we're going retrograde, it means that it's always going to be slowing down and in the direction until eventually we end up, I'll just press X, we're down to 50, 50, but we're still three kilometers up. So we don't have to rush, but we want to give ourselves enough time to just play with this. And so the shadow will end up appearing somewhere over here. This will be a bit of an in a visual indicator as well, but really this is the important one. Again, we never had this before. Two kilometers, but traveling way, way too fast. We want to be under 10 when we actually do when we land. So we're sort of coming almost straight down now. When that there is sort of on top, that's going to be right on top. Let's just slow this thing down again. Again, if I just click this one, I can sort of, I can really manipulate it just by using the mouse. Still a kilometer up. Let's just let it drop down to around about, say, 400 meters with the speed that we're going. Yeah, we're coming in nicely now. 40. So I'm going to get both these numbers. I'm not really too concerned, although, yeah, we're a nice flat area below, below us, which is good. 300. Let's just bleed off the speed a little bit. And we want to be under 10. Here we can see the shadow now. So we're now trying to try to keep it around about 10. And see how the tracking ball is now almost pointing straight up? We don't have to do much at all with this to make this one work. So we're just traveling, and I want to be actually landing at around about, say, six. 
So let's just let it sort of drop a little bit faster. Still got most of our fuel on board. Again, just give it a bit more. 60 meters. We're under 10, under 10 uh, meters per second, which is which is what we need to be doing. 30. Let's just blast it up a bit, and I'm just going to get ready to press the X key. Just when we get really close. There we go. X to turn it off. And uh, we just lock in basically with the uh, stability on. And that's it. We have landed on the MUN. <laughs> what, yay us. <laughs> so that's the, um, that's the MUN landing. Um, actually, I'm, I'm putting all this into one video. I was going to do this in two separate videos. But anyway, that's, the, um, that's how you then land. Uh, you can then do, uh, we can then just go back into this mode. When we click on, right click on any part, it then opens up. We'll extend this, this ladder down. Yep, so that was really, there was no issues at all with any of the stuff that we that we did there. Okay, so, um, well, I guess we'll, um, well, <laughs> we'll just continue on and we'll go, go back home again. Uh, I'll, I'll send, the, uh, I'll send uh, Bob out, so I'm just going to go and do an EVA. Bob will then stand and we then control Bob. So Bob is now the one that we control. So it's got a bit of a rock up now. The, the thing is sort of you know, going to sort of try to sort of not really stabilize itself, but it is just rocking around on the actual legs itself. I can just use the WASD keys to start to sort of then maneuver. We can let go with the space, we can board, we can grab with an F. Uh, if we just go and let go with space, he's now standing on the edge, which we can sort of see through there. So I'll just move back a little bit. And then you go onto the moon surface. There we go. First step for Kerbins, and we're on the surface here. Now, when you're here uh, doing your sort of uh, your EVAs or your um, your moonwalks, uh, you can sort of jump a fair distance up, certainly more than what you've got over through there. Now, you do actually have RCS packs and stuff like that. We're not going to need this because we have built the, uh, the rocket, but you can turn the RCS packs on with R, which will then give you a little jet pack so that when you actually sort of get going with the jet pack, it's going to... Um, it's going to then fire up, but I won't. I won't use that. Well, well, sort of. You can experiment and play with that yourselves. Uh, I'll just turn R just to just to stop the uh, jetpack from from working like this. Now, as we come in towards the ladder, we should just be able to then press F. He'll grab the ladder. Then we just press the W, go up the ladder, um, grab again to the next section, and now we're ready to board again. So just B. That's it. That's our. Uh, we didn't even uh, plant, a, plant a, a flag on the moon, but you can do all that as well if you're wanting to. Uh, that's all we needed to do there. So we've now sort of gotten uh, onto the moon. We've still got like a lot of delta V, like just heaps and heaps of it. So all we're going to do now is just going to go across and um, with our nav ball, we want to again uh, move in a um, in an east west. Uh, direction. So we want to head across wherever the 90 is, which is, in this case, should still be the D, I think. It should maybe the W now. Um, so I'll, I'll, um, I'll just get started. So we are now ready to let, to launch off again. There's nothing else we have to do in through here. So we're just going to go and, um, and just press Z. And actually, it's, not the other, it's the opposite way. And I'm looking at the periapsis. I want to get that up to around about, say, 30. I'm going to lay this one right over. So we're just going to move it straight across. See, it's all, they're, they're coming up. So just laying it right over, and the apoapsis is now coming up. The periapsis is coming up as well. So I'm just sort of holding it towards this direction. I can press the Q and E keys to rotate the ship if I'm wanting to sort of have it make a bit more sort of sense for me in terms of what's above and what's below. But this is fine. Oh, the apoaps is way, way, way too high now. Uh, it doesn't really matter uh, unless I'm going in the wrong direction. But yeah, actually I used a lot of my Delta V there. <laughs> that may be a mistake. Um, damn it. I may have to go back and, and reload one of those. I wasn't watching and we were just wasting the fuel. Uh, if we have a quick look at the M key. So we're going to come back and crash in again. We need to break away and get back to Kerbin. Let's just see what happens. And it's actually, it is actually this one over here that we need to be pushing. 
So let's just see what happens if we create a maneuver plan there and then push this one further out until it breaks again. So that's now going to go back in and we're then going to have a situation where we end up going back close to, to Kerbin. Now we've got 700 Delta V, we've got enough, this is fine. Now it doesn't really matter exactly where we do it, as long as we're pointing back away from the, from the planet, we will then sort of break back in and then have a smaller uh, uh, point of end, uh, a smaller periapsis back over through this side. The, uh, the th if we do it the other side, we'll end up with a, with, it'll go further out because we're going to be using the acceleration of the planet. We're going to be using the, 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 the gravity to, um, to decelerate us so we get closer to, uh, to Kerbin, but that will be fine. Uh, so we'll just do that one. We're going to end up with a, we're going to sort of skim past the planet yet again. So let's go and set this one up. Move this one across. And we'll just break out and then we'll sort of do the other maneuvers from here. Uh, we'll just accelerate up. We might as well watch the planet underneath us as we sort of leave. There we go, rattling through. And now we've got 39 seconds. So we're going to be doing this in the dark side. I might just go back to the map again. And, um, and yeah, I can sort of, I can really can burn whenever I feel like it. So let's just, we just don't want to be crashing, of course. So we'll just uh, go and press Z. There it goes. And as soon as we get that sort of look to it, we'll just press the X. There we are. We're breaking out again. Let's get rid of this uh, node. Oops. God, it is, it's, it is annoying, I've got to say, like it's, um, it will be better at some point, but just not at the moment, it's, uh, again, if I press destroy, I'm destroying my actual craft. Got it. Right, this is where we are. So our periapsis, now you can sort of get other things, like when we leave this area, we're going to then that's going to be the periapsis in through there. I can still maneuver through here, but it is easier to wait until you've actually leave the sphere of influence. Uh, we've got heaps of delta V, so we're going to get home very, very easily. Uh, let's just go and um, watch the craft, I guess, until we actually let's just um, let's just zo zoom out to say here, so we just sort of leave the leave the um, where we are. Just press M and goodbye, Mun. Hello, Kerbin. There's Kerbin coming up. So we're leaving there now. We slingshot around and we're now looking at Kerbin. Oh, hang on, what's happened now? Something just went crazy wrong there. <laughs> what the hell? That's, um, that was not supposed to happen like that, I don't think. Well, it doesn't matter. We're sort of in the same, I don't know how we flipped past Kerbin, but we're in this, this is the orbit that we're now currently in. I, something weird went, went wrong there. We've actually done two orbits and um, I don't understand it, but that's what actually happened. So anyway, the, uh, again, as I say, the game has got like a lot of little bugs uh, in it at this point in time. Now the Apo apps is probably going to be where we want to end up having everything sort of happening. In fact, we can do it from anywhere. Let's just do retrograde. And um, if we do it at the Apo apps, it's the cleanest way, but we have so much Delta V and we have, have hardly anything to do. Like if I just go and create a maneuver plan in here, and uh, just pull it back. You'll sort of see that for it to actually get in and uh, and break into Kerbin's uh, area, it's only it's only a small amount really to then sort of be able to do it. Like 232, we've got heaps, well, not heaps, but we've got enough. Um, again, if I if I'm trying to maximise it, the the that one there would be it would be ideal. Now, what I want to do is I want to make sure that the periapsis ends up not crashing in. I want it to be about 10 kilometres up like what we did before, 10, 20 kilometers. That way we're gonna slow down in the atmosphere. Uh, I'll just zoom that out a little bit. Wish it would tell us the numbers. God, it's so frustrating. It's uh, like, it's it's funny because I, I love the game, but I just, I really am struggling with what the information that the game is giving us. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna ditch this and just gonna do it manually because at least I can then see the numbers. So I'm just gonna go retrograde, which I am. I'm just going to start to um, to power it up, and uh, when this thing comes, when the periapsis comes back down, 
We've still got enough fuel to do this, which is fine. If we didn't have that much left over, really, when we look at all this, and... Okay, 40 kilometers. I'll just very slowly sort of, uh, just let it sort of do its thing to, down to around about, say, 20, 15 kilometers, somewhere around there. They're 15 kilometers. That way, that way we're going to sort of hit the atmosphere and slow right down. And that's all we need to do. We've now basically are, um, have now been captured. So let's now speed up time until we actually hit this one through here. Time up to this point. Okay, and then we'll just go back in and press the M key. Now we're still facing retrograde. I'm just going to turn off my, um, my stabilizers now. Um, we really don't need anything else now on this craft. There's just, there's nothing there. There's the MUN in behind us there, over, over there now. Um, time to uh, ditch, the, uh, ditch the, the lander. Off she goes. So that's going to burn up in the atmosphere. We're going to come sort of, uh, uh, sort of uh, cascading in as well. Let's just speed up time again as we come back into Kerbin. So I guess we've done an extended play of actually doing the landing and getting back home again as well, as well as actually going into the um, into that orbit. So we're still in space, but we're coming we're coming sort of down. Now, once we start to hit the uh, atmosphere at, say, 70, I'll just speed up time a little bit, uh, we will then start, this will then start to wobble around and then just, uh, you know, find, find its own own form as in terms of the, um, the atmosphere. There we go. So we've just we've hit under 70, so now we start to see it wobble around. I do have the SAS turned off. It makes it easier just to um, you know let uh, let it do its own thing, particularly if we've got a heat shield on. Not that there's any heat uh, in the game at this point in time, but there will be. And in we go. Thirty kilometres, and we're seeing that we've got very very high speeds. The reason we don't want to come straight into the atmosphere is that ultimately the game will punish us for coming in too fast. Uh, we do need to sort of break in the atmosphere as much as we possibly can, uh, just to let the atmosphere bleed off our, our speed. So we're still 24 kilometres up, but you'll see the, the periapsis is now is, is diminishing all the time because of this atmospheric breaking. So we're going as fast as we can at four times speed at this point in time. Still 15 kilometers above the ground. Slowing right down. Now we can technically put the parachute out at any point in time, like now. Um, we're certainly going slow enough for that to actually be the case. I might just do it now, actually. Well, I tried to. <laughs> Come on, parachute. Let's go to number one speed. Try it now. There we go. May have just been because I was in accelerated speed. And so the parachute, uh, I'll just now accelerate again. good this game looks very very good okay so this was an, an extended one um, we got there in the end <laughs> with all of the uh, problems sorry about the frame rate of my uh, of my camera I'll try not to move around too much just so that I don't uh, sort of wreck the effect I think it's recording okay it looks it looks all right 400 meters but yeah this is a successful moon landing and um, and pick up hope that was helpful just in terms of sort of how to do the basics 
And I'll do one more video. I'll do one more video. I won't do space planes because it's just too buggy for me to attempt this at this point in time, but I will actually show you how to build a, a, an aeroplane in the next in the next episode and how to then take off and land, essentially, or, or landing is probably the, the hard thing. So we'll, uh, we'll go through what that actually is. But you can see there the surface speed, same as what we were sort of aiming for on the MUN, you know, under 10 metres per second. Uh, this is important. Um, yep, the ground is sort of coming up towards us. I'll just um, go back to normal speed. And there we are. Actually, I'll go a little bit faster. Otherwise, it'll just take too long. But a beautiful looking program. It's going to be great when it's all, when all the bugs have been ironed out of it. But at the moment, it's fairly frustrating, I've got to say, to, to try to sort of do anything with the game. There we are, see the parachute. Now, will we roll? Yes, we will. <laughs> Just a little bit. Now, if we're trying to, actually, no, it's not, this is going to stay here. There we go. So we're actually now made it back. Uh, again, we just press escape and recover vessel. Confirm recovery. And there we go. Our first uh, successful uh, Muna, Muna uh, exp expedition. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Hope this has been helpful. I'll be back in one more episode just to finish off this little pre-release uh, tutorial series where we then just build an airplane. So I'll catch you then.